G'day everyone and welcome to my recap of the third day at the 2023 IPF Classic World Championships. Um, now admittedly I got 30 minutes into recording and things went wrong so I'm doing this again. Um, so hopefully things don't go wrong this time. Today was an epic day. Um, I started recording practically as soon as lifting started. It was a day full of close battles, amazing lifts, world records, drama, uh, inconsistency in refereeing, shall we say, and an error by the referees, by everyone, that I don't know if anyone has noticed except for me. Like, unless I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. So we're gonna get to that in a second. So what are we looking at today? Today we're looking at the, uh, today was Tuesday, the 13th of July, of June, sorry. So we've got the 63 women and the 74 kilo men. Bunch of women lifted in the morning, 16 of them, and a bunch of men lifted in the afternoon. Um, so we've got B group lifters here. Uh, let's take a look at what those lifters were. Now, importantly for this recap, I will be covering the women's section first. That'll probably take 25 to 30 minutes and the men's will come after. So if you're only interested in the 74 kilo men's, you can skip straight to that. There'll be a timestamp in the description. But uh, my last couple of recaps, they've been a little bit jumpy, moving back and forth. So I'm going to do my best to try to make things a little bit easier to follow because, yeah, admittedly, the last couple of days haven't been great. I'm finding my flow. I appreciate all the support in the meantime. Let's take a look at the women's category first. Now, in the women's, our top nominations, you can take a look at this here. I'm going to get in a little bit closer so we can see. We have uh, Carol Agara. She's an absolute weapon, equipped monster. Uh, with a nomination of 546. We've also got Chiara Bernardi, also of Italia, 525. Megan Scanlon, Joy Namani fighting for a place on the uh, podium. Now, Joy traditionally competes at 57. In the past, it's competed at 52. This is actually her first competition in the 63 class. And so we don't know where her limit is. We don't know what her numbers are going to be. So we're all really excited to see how she can fight up in this new weight class. Um, so these are the lifters to keep an eye for. And also we've got Shay Zaru. She's the Australian. Of course, I'm Australian, so I'm going to be covering her lift as well for my Australian following so you can see how she goes. She does phenomenally. Heads up. Alrighty. No technical issues so far. Let's see how we can go. Uh, like this, like this, like this. Alrighty. First lift we're going to take a look at is Joy Namani. She takes 167.5 kilos as an opener. Now, one of the big themes that you're going to see today is jury involvement and jury activity. We haven't seen this as much in the past, but for example, Joy Namani's opening lift gets paid a no lift. It's two red lights. The jury come around and they overrule it and it gets paid a good lift. So this 167 and a half initially given too, uh, too high on depth paid a good lift. I think this was the right call because that did look pretty good to me. She takes 177 on her second attempt. And this is 177, a 10 kilo jump from that opening lift after the jury fortunately overturned. She makes that and she goes to 182.5. So another five kilo jump. And this little bit of extra weight proves to be a little bit too much in terms of, well, she's obviously got the physical strength. She stands up out of this. But uh, when the weight gets heavy, you get a little bit defensive and maybe she cut the depth a little bit and she gets credited as a no lift on this one. Two to one red lights, no jury overturn on this. So Joy walks away with 177.5. Australia Shazeru opens proceedings for herself at 170 kilos. Uh, very good attempt there. And now, admittedly, I haven't watched all the lifting of this well, what are we doing here? Where are we going? We're going here. I haven't watched all the lifting of this championships. I've missed some lifts and sessions, but this is the first one where I've seen a lifter told to replace the bar on a squat, at least one of the main lifters, at least one of the competitive primetime lifters. She unracks this bar, and for whatever reason, the referees aren't happy with her starting position, and she's told to replace. Now, the clock continues to run, so she's got time, but, uh, you know, when this happens to you, you're confused, you're, you're um, you know, thrown out of a loop, she does a great job of staying, uh, what's the word, composed, and she comes out and with 20 seconds left, you guys can see that in the bottom left, with just enough time, and she's able to get uh, her lift in with about five seconds on the clock. Apparently, the reason she was told to replace the bar was because her wrist straps were in contact with the bar. You can't have your wrist straps more than two centimeters past the center of your wrist joint, 
I mean, I don't know how much that got adjusted, but maybe she got a bit of benefit of the doubt there. And she was given a squat command. Fortunately enough, two to one, good lift. Third uh, attempt. Fortunately, this time there was no uh, drama, but again, kind of like the Joy Namani situation, maybe a little bit defensive as she hit the hole and cut it a little bit high. She has been squatting a little bit high in training, I will say. And that was one of my concerns I had for her, you know, as an, as an Australian fan. So yeah, I'm happy she got two out of three. Third one was very close. You can be the judge of that. She finishes down 177. Now, Kiara opens her squat with 182.5. And again, much to my surprise, she misses this on depth. Now, you've got to think in this opening round of squats, we're seeing Joy Amani miss on depth, gets overturned. And then Kiara misses on depth three red lights, which you can't overturn. And so she decides to come out onto the second attempt squat with 185. Now, remember in the nomination, she was nominated second to Carola, quite behind, maybe 20 kilos. And if you're, the, if you're nominated below someone that you're trying to beat, you can't afford to be missing lifts. And so for her second attempt, she jumps 2.5 kilos, kind of in between, you know, wanting to put some kilos on the bar. But um, that lift will end up being costly because she successfully hits 185, comes out for 192.5 on the third attempt squat. And uh, as we will see here, this proves to be too heavy. Um, so yeah, I mean, like she finishes a squat session on one out of three, her best lift being that second at 185. Had she have gotten her opener, maybe her second would have been 187, 190. I mean, she didn't lose many kilos here because obviously she physically, she physically failed at 192. So what was her limit? Maybe 190, 187. And she got credited with 185. So she didn't lose many kilos, but yeah, maybe she opened too heavy. I don't know what was going on there. But yeah, you can't be missing lifts going one out of three when your opponents have good days. Speaking of opponents having good days, Megan Scanlon, the reigning champion, in the 63 kilo women's class opens with 180, very smooth. It's, she gets three white lights. She takes 187 and a half as a second attempt. Same thing, she gets three white lights. We're gonna breeze through these. And her third attempt is 195. So she takes nice, healthy seven and a half kilo jumps. And this is typical of the United States coaching team. I don't know if they have a uniform coaching policy with this, but we saw, say for example, Kiara open at 182, then get 185 and then miss 192. So she started 182, ended with 185. Megan Scanlon started at 180 and finished with 195. And so there's a saying in uh, powerlifting attempts, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. And she really proved that today, getting three out of three and nailing a 195 squat. Now, Carol Agara, you've got to think, she's watching all this unfold before her eyes. She's the heaviest squatting, squat opener. She saw... Carola, oh, Carola, she's Carola. She saw um, Kiara miss the opener. And so if I was her, my strategy is I've already got a bit of a head start on you. I don't need to be too aggressive with my attempt selection. She takes really sensible attempt uh, selection here, jumping seven and a half after an easy opener. This is 202.5 kilos, seven and a half more than her opener of 195. It is very smooth. And on the third, they jump to 207.5 kilos, and like Megan Scanlon, Ka Carola Gara goes three out of three on the squats. Fantastic day for her. And so if we look at the results after squats, the gold medal goes to Carola Gara, 207. Megan Scanlon, 195. Chiara Bernardi, 185. Like I said, Chiara losing kilos there while the top two lifters in the squat section go three out of three. Australia Shays Roo in sixth at 177.5. Okay, we've gone to the bench. Joy Namani, who was our... Uh, you know, essentially weakest squatter, also isn't the best bencher in the group, but we know she's a deadlift monster. She opens with 95 on the bench. That's what the 95 looked like. She jumps five, five kilos, very reasonable. And she benches 100, very reasonable. And she takes a, again, very sensible jump to 102.5. And so after going two out of three on the squats, she manages to go three out of three on the bench with a 102.5 kilos. She gets white lights on that bench press. Okay, Australia's Shazeru takes very similar attempts, very similar attempts to, um, to Joy, but two and a half more. Starts at 97, that was easy. She takes 102 and a half, so a five kg jump. This is very typical kind of, plan, you know, attempt selection jumps five and a half kilos from first to second at these weights. Now is this. And now admittedly in the lead up to this world's watching Shay's training online, I was a little bit concerned about how the elbow depth would be perceived on her. She has a very 
you know, wide grip, uh, short range of motion. But fortunately, we had no issues. When I say we, I mean Australia. She got white lights on all the lift. She went three out of three on the bench. So she had a great day there. Um, unlike on her squats where she, you know, had the re-rack issue and then the depth on the third. Great day on the bench. She finishes a 105. I believe that is a PEB. Now, we are looking at Chiara, the Italian. Um, she is opening up her bench day with 107.5, very strong. And now she has a little bit of drama on her second attempt. She takes 115, a seven and a half kilo jump, very reasonable. And she actually has this lift given a no lift. Initially, actually, it is credited with a good lift, two white lights, but she gets called by the jury on elbow depth. So you can see there, she got one red light. I don't think you can actually see that. I think it's cut out of the frame. But she gets one red light, two whites, and the jury end up overturning this initial good lift. And so you're kind of left in this sticky situation of what do you do for the third? They end up choosing to repeat the weight. It's very hard to make technical adjustments when you got called on something like elbow depth. Like how do you get more elbow depth? Do you flatten your back out? You know, that's something you're not used to. Do you narrow the grip? Do you turn the elbows out in whatever? Whatever they did, it worked because she gets three white lights at 115. And so Chiara, the Italian, Chiara Bernardi, one out of three squats, two out of three bench, very tough day. Like I said, she, the only way she was going to beat Carola Garra is if Carola had a bad day and Chiara had a good day. So far, it's not shaping up that way. Let's see how the rest of the day goes. In the meantime, Megan Scanlon is sneaking around for a silver or bronze medal. She opens with 120. She's a monstrous bench presser. I love this bench, 120. It was no issues, white lights. And she kind of has a similar issue as Kiara on her second attempt. And you got to remember, Megan benched right after Kiara. So we had these two lifts in a row, get paid good lifts, and then overturned. This was two white lights to one red on elbow depth and got overturned. And so two lifts in a row, the same thing happened. Two whites, then overturned on an elbow depth. So it was a little bit, uh, you know, I'm going to say controversial. What was going on? How was the referees and the, and the jury interpreting that elbow depth? She was left with a decision as well. Do you repeat 125 or go up? They decided to go up to 127.5. And again, whatever adjustments they made worked because she nails it. And so she gets her third bench. It's very hard to make technical adjustments and go up in weight. But I mean, I was suspicious of this attempt selection, but it worked out perfectly for her. She finishes the day technically two out of three, but you went up anyway. So it's kind of like a perfect day on bench. Maybe the initial plan would have been 130. And so didn't lose many kilos there on bench. Had a great day in squats as well, obviously, three to three. The last lift we're, lifter we're going to take a look at is Carola Garra. She is a bench phenom, and she was also one that we were unsure as to how they were going to interpret the uh, elbow depth on her. Totally fine, three white lights on the opener, and it turns out that there was no issues at all. Her second attempt at 142.5 looks like this. Incredible bench presser at 63 kilo women's. And so after two out of two, she takes 145.5. This is for a new world record, an open world record in the bench press. And it's just a little bit too heavy. So she finishes the day two out of three on the bench press. And so the bench medals, gold for Carola, silver for Megan, and bronze for Chiara. Pretty typical kind of placings, as you might have expected in the lead up. There was no real shake up in terms of nominations, bench press meddling, all that. Shazeru finishes fifth on bench, sixth in squat, having a pretty good day uh, there. I think it's five out of three, five out of six for her. Okay, moving into deadlifts. Now, I haven't actually ordered the deadlift videos by accident, so we're gonna go through them. Shazeru opens with 190 kilos. And now, the main battle, by the way, is going on for first place is between Carola, or the medals, I mean, the way it's looking like, as you kind of come into deadlifts, is Caroline first, Megan in second, Kiara for third, and Joy Money for fourth. Those four are basically destined to finish in that placing, Carola, Megan, Kiara, and Joy, unless something goes wrong for someone, unless a door opens. And that's what I, and this is this concept that I call of the door opening. That's if a lifter mucks up, gets one deadlift, or misses an opener, misses a second, a door opens and you have someone ready to sneak up and take your place. We're gonna see how that pans out in the meantime, Shazeru takes this opening deadlift of 190 kilos and she has a bobble at the top. Very unusual, uh, maybe not very unusual, but you know, somewhat common, I suppose. Error to make and she gets credited a no lift. So 
they choose, and by they, I mean the Australian coaching team, chooses to retake 190 kilos. I think it's a sensible choice, although not the kind of way you want your lifting to go. And she nails that. There's no issues there. It was looked a little bit wobbly, but it was totally fine. And so after nailing your opener twice, the decision is, do you take a big jump to your plan third? Do you kind of cut the difference between your second and third, or do you just take your second? They choose 200 kilos. This is below what she's done in training. I know she's done 205 in the gym. So she'll be somewhat disappointed with this. But to finish the day with a good lift is awesome. That's seven out of nine, missing one squat, one deadlift. And a very good result for the Australian Shazeru. Go away. Okay, Carola Garra. We're going to go in order of our top nominations or our expected top nominations compared to where they are. Um, not top nominations, uh, placings in terms of subtotals. Carol Gara, she had the perfect day. Gold medal squat, gold medal bench. She opens her day with a 192.5 kilo deadlift, which we'll see here. Where is it? Here. This is 192 and a half. And so you got to think, she's fucking in the lead. These other girls are trying to catch her. If you're in the lead, like I said, the only way you lose is if you open the door. So you've got to be sort of conservative with your jumps. The only way she loses is if she's stuck on that 192 and a half deadlift. If she misses twice, then the door opens and other people can jump over her. And so they make a very reasonable decision to take 200 as a second attempt. This is the 200. Seven and a half kilo jump, fairly modest, I would say. Very good coaching and attempt selection. And then they finish the day on a 207.5 kilo deadlift. Another seven and a half. Probably could have just taken two or five. I would have just been a bit more conservative. Um, no need to open the door for someone else, but she was fair, very far in front and it was very unlikely that anyone would catch her. So she takes 207, another seven and a half jump from the second and she nails it. So she's basically had the perfect day. Eight out of nine, only missed that one bench. And she's very well poised to take the win in this competition. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, next up we're looking at Chiara Bernardi. Now Chiara is fighting for bronze and silver. If she has a great session, she could take silver off Megan Scanlon. If not, she ends up in the bronze medal. Now, you gotta remember, she was nominated in second, but Megan just had a great squat day while Kiara didn't. Megan had a good bench session while Kiara not so much either. So this 202.5 kilo opener was fine. I wasn't super impressed by it. It wasn't the fastest deadlift I've ever seen. And they jump 12 and a half to 215 kilos. Now, again, I wasn't super confident about this 215, but somehow she, they managed to get this. And that's a good lift, no issues. And so for the third attempt, they choose to take 220 kilos. Sorry, they choose to take 220 kilos. And there was an opportunity to take an attempt that would sneak into silver from Megan Scanlon. I should have shown you, I'll show you in a second. But instead, they choose to take a more sensible 220. This secures Kiara, potentially the bronze, unless she gets pipped at the post by Joy Namani, who we'll see in a moment. We're going to now take a look at Megan Scanlon. Where is she? Megan Scanlon is here. She opens at 192.5, which is the same as Carola Gara. And, oops, there we go. Very easy opener at... 192. Remember, she's the reigning world champ. She was nominated in third, but looking for a silver. And she knows that the silver is not in the bag, but a very good chance now, considering Kiara only had the one out of three squat day. And so Megan takes 205 on the second attempt, taking a 12 and a half kilo jump. So she went 192.5 to 205 kilos. This is a 12 and a half kilo jump. Trying to build that total after a 195 kilo squat and a 127.5 kilo deadlift. Ah, sorry, 127.5 kilo bench. So she's eight out of eight at this point. And she was sitting there, her coaches were watching and waiting. Uh, where are we? Oh, this is the one, sorry. Nope, there we go. Their coaches were watching and waiting Carola. They had 227.5 kilos loaded on the score sheet after a 205 second ready to, if Carola missed that third deadlift, potentially send it and go for the win. Instead, Carola nailed her third deadlift, meaning that Megan would need a 235 kilo deadlift. 
from a 205 second. They correctly assessed that that was just well out of reach. And so rather than shooting for gold, they, just cho they chose to defend silver with a very sensible five kilo jump from second to third. And this is the 210 deadlift. This was pretty much on the limit anyway. I mean, she was never gonna get anything past 220 or 227 or whatever it was, but she takes that silver medal. And so you've gone Carola, the Italian second and gold, Megan Scanlon in third, um, Chiara in, sorry, Megan Scanlon in second, Chiara in third. And if you, and if you remember, Chiara got that third deadlift at 220, ball breaking grinder, to add to a total to defend the bronze. And then in comes Joy Namani. Now this is Joy's second deadlift at 225. We're gonna skip the, the opener, it was 207, it was easy. And it was good. And so at this point, or at least after Kiara makes her third deadlift or the 220 that we saw earlier, Joy is 15 kilos behind. We're gonna find it here. Yeah, Joy is 15 kilos behind bronze. You can even see that this uh, on the left here, I believe. Yeah, you guys can. So she's on 505 and Kiara's on 520. So she's trailing by 15 kilos. And so, do the math, she needs a 15 kilo jump from the 225 to 240. She's a heavier lifter, so she needs a little bit more. Fortunately for her, this is a world record. So it's actually ends up choosing the correct load, 240.5 kilos to jump into bronze from the uh, from the fourth position. She has no risk of losing the fourth position. And so she makes a, essentially a Hail Mary attempt, jumping 15 kgs. I don't know who else has the guts to jump 15 kgs. But this is what you do when you're a deadlift hero. And take a look at this humongous 240 kilo deadlift. She locks it out. What do you think? Apparently the referees did not like that and they give it no lift. You can see a reaction. She was a little bit shocked, but her, uh, Playful nature comes out very quickly and she just takes it on the chin. But yeah, take a look at this. I mean, you could make a, I mean, I don't even know what you could make a case for there. Like her knees were locked, her shoulders were back. Blue cards she received means, um, you know, like resting the bar on the legs or downward movement. Didn't look like that to me. It was very close. We were hoping for an overrule. As I said earlier, the judges had been, or the referees had been very active on the overrule. That didn't come into play. And so she ends with the 225 kilo deadlift that you see here. Missing the bronze, the total positions look like this. Caroline in first place, 537. Megan Scanlon, 532. Chiara Bernardi, 520. Joy Namani, 505. And fourth, just missing bronze. I mean, it's a 15 kilo spread, but it, uh, difference, but it was very close. A one white light away from being a bronze medalist. And Shay Zeru on 482 in fifth. The best result Australia has had in the Open Worlds so far, the championships equaled Vicky K in the 47 kilo class. Now, when you see the score sheet, it looks pretty standard. You know, you've got pretty even uh, spacings there. But you got to remember, you know, Kiara only went one squat. Uh, Megan had the perfect day. You know, if, if Megan missed the seven and a half kilos on a squat here for some reason, or let's say she missed that third bench. You know, she missed that second bench at 125, got the 127. If she missed that at seven and a half kilos down, Kiara only would have needed five kilos more. Or if Kiara didn't get penalized on that second bench press, or if, you know, Joyce's third attempt squat wasn't called high, then she would have only needed 235.5 kilos on that last deadlift to win. And so, you know, these small kind of technical calls make a huge difference because they affect how much you end up needing to lift in the end. Carol Agara was never gonna get caught in the end. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is the most controversial thing that I'm gonna be talking about today, and that is Emily Zer Linden. Emily Zer Linden of Canada comes out with this nominated she opened at 182 with a nominated 192 and a half. Now, if you are familiar, involved in powerlifting, you, and you know kilo plates, you know how to load that. Three reds, white, black, silver, collar, 192.5 kilos. When she comes out and lifts, you're going to see this in a second. The cameras aren't good because you can't see both sides, but we have an uneven bar load on the bar. You'll see on this, on her left side, that is loaded to 177.5. So she's missing plates on this side. And you can see as a result, she lifts kind of crooked. She ends up making the lift. She gets credited with a good lift. Uh, she gets three white lights. She looks at the plates and she goes, wait a second, that wasn't quite right. And she realizes that there's a miss load. Now, this is what the bar looks like. 
And this is all we can see. And we can see in this rack here on the left, I presume you can see my mouse, but you can see in the rack on the left, there's a green, there's a yellow, there's a blue. You can't see any of the small plates. We don't know where they are. 192 and a half is supposed to be three reds, white, black, silver. There's missing a white and a black on this side. So you've got seven and a half kilos missing on this side. Seven and a half kilos missing. So from 192.5, if you're missing a five kilo plate and a 2.5 kilo plate, that means you're missing 7.5 kilos. So the total weight of this bar, assuming that her right side is correctly loaded, is 7.5 kilos less than the nominated load, which is 185 kilos. And if a lift is misloaded, uneven, whatever it is, but the lifter gets it, the coach or the coaching team are allowed to accept the lift, are allowed to take it as a good lift rather than retake it. If it's a misload and the lifter fails, let's say it's unevenly loaded like this is, this is, and they fail, they're allowed to say, hey, that's not fair. We want to retake it at the end of the round. So you get a retry, life goes on. Because she got the lift, they were allowed to accept what was on the bar. And so it's very hard to see because you can't see what weights come off the bar there. But the controversy is that they get credited with 190 kilos. The only way, right, and I'm going to say this in no uncertain terms, the only way that this bar is 190 kilos is if it's on this other side, you have a green, a black, and a silver. And I'm telling you right now, I can see the green in that rack. So there is no way in hell that that is 190 kilos. I'm telling you, if that right side is correctly loaded, which odds are it is, that bar is loaded to 185 kilos, a very unbalanced 185 kilos, but 185 kilos nonetheless. Because it's supposed to be 192, you're missing 7.5 on one side, that's 185. So she gets credited with 190, nobody notices. The technical control officer comes over and says, what's the problem? Oh, there was a misload. Do you guys just want to accept the weight? Whatever it is. Garrett Bentley, the Canadian coach, says, yeah, we'll just accept the weight. We don't want to waste our energy. And so they get credited with a the weight they never did. So very odd. Uh, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. I might share that story in another post. But um, yeah, if anyone has got any solutions or answers, if you've got a video from that side as to what was the correct, what was the bar load on that side, on her right side, I would love to know. Okay, that is the fin of the women's section. I know this is getting long, but we're going to move through right into the men's section because this was a stacked class. You can take a look at the nominations yourself. Taylor Atwood, multi-time world champion, I think five times. Kiel Backland, Fan Chun Chia, Carl Johansson, the junior world champion. Uh, Tim Monogati coming down from the 83 class. We had a very stacked class. Main thing that I want you to note here is that Kiel Abakalan is a veteran, 16 years in the game, lifted in the B group. Because this nomination total apparently was done at 83 kilos, not at 74 kilos. And so instead of lifting in the A group, he was lifting the B group, he lifted in the morning. And so his results were already, um, what's the word, I suppose, established before the A group even started. So we're going to take a look at that now. How do I do this? I press this button. Uh, no, nope, I go to this button. Uh, what? How about this? Okay. Then we go here, we go here. We're going to take a look at the Kiel's session. Now, like I said, Kiel lifted in the morning. And this was, we're just going to quickly take a look at his lifts. He squatted 250 kilos. Now, I don't want this video to go for an hour. So take a look at this squat here. This is, he went three out of three, he squatted 250, and he made weight at 74. And I think this is kind of what I said at the start of this video, obviously a huge grind here. I would have loved to have seen Kel in that A group because he was a fighter. He really would have given it up to them. I mean, it's so hard to fight when you're in the B group because you're just lifting on your own. It's just a different vibe, different conditions. Like I said, different refereeing, different standards. It's very hard. He benches 192.5. Go straight out of three on the bench. And his deadlift, he deadlifted 317.5 at 74. Huge deadlift. Went to this 328 kilos for a world record to get a half kilo chip, which might be important later on. He makes the lift, as you see. He gets a jury overturn, unsurprisingly. And so this initial good lift two to one gets turned down by a jury overrule. Um, and this is what I mean before about the inconsistency things. It's like you've got a different group of referees, different group of juries in the morning session as you would in the afternoon session. And so how would it have been different? I mean, of course, if the nomination isn't lined up with your actual nomination, then you shouldn't be in the A group. The actual nomination they used was a true 74 kilo total that he posted, but that was only to qualify. And so his 
qualifying total was like 600 or something ridiculous. And so, yeah, that lift gets turned down. So he finishes the day, I think, with 760 kilos on the total. The other lift that I want to quickly show you is Alec Erickson. Uh, Alec Erickson. Alex Erickson is one of my good friends. We've competed and traveled together in the past. He's a veteran of the game as well. And he finished the day on this awesome 307 and a half kilo deadlift, um, which is a big PB for him. And he's failed this in the past and he absolutely smoked this. And I love this reaction. He was confused. He was like, wait, did that just come up as good as I think it did? So that was great. But uh, going on to the squats, the last thing I want to show you from the B group, this is all in the afternoon session. Alex Erickson competed in the B group as well. Oopsie. Apologies. Was this lift here. Um, this is by Yuki Shibuya. And he went for the squat world record. You can see he squatted 272.5. And he's going for 283 on his third. This is a world record squat. And I'm just going to let you watch this. Take a look at this. This is a huge lift. From the B group. Incredible fight. And you're never going to guess it gets overturned. This two to one white light lift gets paid no lift by a jury overall. You can see that flashing red text there, jury overalls. So he finishes on 272. Let's get on to the A session. Uh, we're going to cruise through past these. I saved a lot of these lifts, but I'm going to give you a bit of a summary. Josh Wright squats 242.5 as a third attempt. He's from Germany. He's not one of our big heavy hitters, but you know, I do want to give credit to these guys that are taking lift anyway. Uh, it was just so close. The nominations were so tight. Um, and in fact, I'm going to go, we had a look at the nominations. So he scores 242 from Germany. Uh, Christos Constantin, you can see these attempts, 240, then 242 and a half. I don't know if you can actually see that. It might be out of frame, but he opened at 240 and then he went to 242.5, which tells me that there was a, a attempt selection error there. And that was proven to be the case because his third attempt was at 265. Uh, which you can see here. Yeah, the, the text is a little bit out of frame. That's okay. He went 240, 242.5, then 265, which he got in a three out of three. So kind of good for him there. Um, now, the other big name was Chun Chia Fan. He squatted 252. His opener was 235. Again, the text is a bit out of frame. I'm sorry. 235, and then went 252.5. Big squat. Big squat here as a second attempt. And he was a bit of a dark horse for me. I was not expecting this guy. I, I didn't know who he is. I still don't know who he is. Um, but he really impressed me. He squatted 252 and he missed his third on 265, which we're going to skip past for brevity's sake. Carl Johansson, he's the junior world champion. He's super impressive. I remember the first time I saw him did a 307 and a half, 308, some European or world record at the time, a couple of years ago. And I was like, who is this guy? And he continues to improve. His opener of squat was 252.5. Nice one. They take a 10 kilo jump to 262.5. Again, I hope you can still hear me okay. This is 262, a 10 kilo jump for the Swede. And they go to 267 and a half. So this is a five kilo jump. And as a reminder, the Swede is nominated in fourth behind Taylor Atwood Backland, who again has the uh, nomination that's in the wrong session, um, our wrong weight class. He takes to us 267, and he actually nails a 267.5 kilo squat. Very tough, but he gets it, so he's happy there, three out of three. Now, Taylor Atwood. If you remember when I was talking about Shea Zaru's, um, Shea Zaru's um, squat, sorry, oopsie, apologies. She was the first lift I've seen in this competition where a lifter gets told to re-rack the weight. And the same thing happens to Taylor Atwood here. He unracks with 20 seconds on the clock. You can see them in the top left of your frame. Looks good to me, standing straight. I don't know what could possibly be wrong with that. Gets told to re-rack. He's a bit confused. He's a very methodical, slow lifter. He doesn't like to rush, but he's got 10 seconds on the clock. And so he unracks very quickly. You can see the time there. He's got three seconds. He hasn't even finished standing and he gets the squat command with literally one second on the clock on his opener. And he nails it. So it's a good lift for Taylor Atwood on his opener. Jesus, that was dramatic. Second attempt is 270. And this time, no drama with the re-rack. I mean, I don't even know what he did better on the second unrack on that first attempt. Looked about the same. Bit of a slow second attempt. I mean, not slow, but slow by Taylor standards. He likes to blow up his attempts and take big jumps. 
They take a modest 7.7 .7 kilo jump, which I think is the right call. I'm going to skip through this. And this is, like I said, a very deep field, so they need every kilo they can get. Um, you know, the commentator six pack, and I believe Amelia were saying it's very unlike, it's very rare that Taylor is like fighting for placings. And so he needs every kill he can get. He gets this lit, uh, he gets red lighted, sorry, no lifted. And this time, no jury overrule. So he gets left of two out of three. I, I, I'm watching this again. That looks good to me. Depth is great. He got one red light for depth, which was a red card, and one red light, which is a blue card, for soft knees. Usually he's a blue on squats. Look, I'm really hurting for Taylor because I thought that was a good lift. Uh, Paul Rambava, Rimbaville, apologies. He went one out of three only on 260. We're going to skip through these, unfortunately. Dennis Fastelli really impressed me. He opened at 262, went to 270, and then he's 30 10 plus 277.5. The same weight as Taylor Atwood. I haven't heard of this person, unfortunately. So Dennis, if you're watching, congratulations, because he had a great day. He, uh, spoiler alert, goes 9 out of 9. He's not as good at bench and deadlift as he is at squats. But this 277.5 kilo squat was good enough for a bronze medal in the squat. So awesome to see this. And it was smooth as well. He had a few kilos left there. That was great. Okay, Tim Monaghini, the New Zealander. He comes in with a 267 opener. I thought this was a little bit uh, heavy initially. But he proved me to be a fucking idiot because he blew that up. 267 was great. They jumped 10 kilos to 277. Again, this was really nice. You can see this here. And you can see that big smile on his face. Tim is a bit of a volatile lifter, I'll admit. Like in the past, he isn't the most consistent lifter you've ever seen. Um, he either has really great days or really not so great days. But to go, go two out of two on squats in this really strict refereeing field is really great. They go up for 283.5 for world record. I would have maybe been tempted to do 285.5 because his squats, whoopsie, were looking really good. And that extra few kilos might have been pivotal. But Nevertheless, they go for this world record, Taylor Atwood's world record, no, no less. And it's good. Probably had two and a half kilos more. We'll never know. But three white lights. So Tim goes three out of three. So he has a great day. And you can see the results here. Um, oh, I did I say... Oh, yeah, I did. Tim Onegeti gets 283.5. Dennis Fastelli, who I said got a bronze, actually gets a silver medal in the squat. Yuki Shibuya gets a bronze from the B group. You can see the rest of the names there. So crazy squat session. Taylor Atwood dropping seven and a half kilos on the squat. Carl Johansson going three out of three. Dennis Vestelli going three out of three. Tom Monaghetti going three out of three, breaking a world record. In the bench, Christos Constantinou had a tough day. Uh, he went three out of three on squats, but he only got one bench missing, 157 and 162. Tim Monaghetti opened at 165 on the bench press. Now, he's not as good of a bench presser as he is a squatter or a deadlifter. I know the feels. Smooth opening bench. He takes 170. I want you guys to tell me what you think of this, oopsie, of this second attempt at bench press at 170 kilos. It's fairly smooth in my opinion, but big sticking point in the middle. And they take a really smart decision, that is to skip the bench. And Ryan, the commentator, made a really good point here that I really like. It's really strong reasoning. Is it worth going out there for two and a half kilos more, having a back cramp? and potentially costing you more in deadlift, or is it better off to have that extra time, not just the, you know, saving the energy, but the time to just, you know, instead of sitting around for 10 minutes waiting for your bench, getting undressed, having a drink, cooling down, having a stretch, doing your warm ups, whatever it might be, receiving um, therapy. I know that there's a physiotherapist, I think, or a, or a chiro on hand. So make a smart decision and they skip the third, third bench. So Tim's on five out of five. Carl Johansson opens at 170 here. Nice opening bench. Uh, he gets a good lift. He takes 177.5 on the second attempt. And like I said, this guy is a junior world champ. He's freaking tall, man. I don't know if you can tell this, but 74s usually aren't this tall. Um, we're usually 5'3". I'm saying we as if I'm, a, I'm one. But this guy looks like he's 5'8", 5'10". Somebody please confirm. And he benches like a beast. 177. And he takes 182 and a half on the third attempt. And no surprises, he goes three out of three. I mean, like, his squat was right on the limit, that 267. His bench is right on the limit, 182. But I've said this numerous times already today in the last couple of recaps. If you're in a deep field, 
you have to make lifts. You cannot place well, win by missing lifts. So to be six out of six on PBs on both lifts, going into deadlift as a big deadlifter, which you will see, is a very great place to be. Uh, Josh Wright has a great day on the bench as well. Uh, he benches 185 on the second and gets red lighted for down of movement. He comes out on the third and he gets this bench press pretty strong. Like I said, he benched 185 on the second. He just misgrooved it a little bit. So he comes back for redemption and nails this. I had my eye on Josh. I didn't know where he'd be at in deadlift, if he would be up in contention. But um, yeah, he had a pretty recent, reasonable day here. He's on five out of six at this point. Okay. USA, USA, Taylor Atwood. He comes out here for his bench opener, 400 pounds, 182.5 kilos. Well within range. He has benched, I believe, two or two and a half in the past in a meet. And as much as 215 in training, I think touch and go maybe. So very well within his range, uh, within reason. Very nice opening bench. He takes a 10 kilo jump. And you got to think, man, Taylor has dropped kilos on the squad. He's watching his rivals go three out of three, Tim, Carl. And yeah, he must be sweating here. And he knows how important these lifts. You can see how focused he was. It was awesome. He benches 192 and a half on the second. And he takes a 5 kg jump to 197 on the third. This is what his third attempt looks like at 197.5. And Clutch goes three out of three on the bench. Very important kilos to the total. Now, Ching Chui Fan, if I'm saying that correctly, is someone, like I said, was a bit of a dark horse and he really impressed me. He benched 190 as an opener and I was like, wait a second, 190? Holy hell. Comes out and does 200 on the second. Chun Chia Fan, Chun Chia Fan of Taipei. This is what 200 kilo bench press looks like in this guy's hands. It looks like my 100 kilo bench. Incredible. He comes out for a 205 kilo bench as a third attempt. And man, when I saw this, I was like, holy hell, this guy's freaking good. And you gotta remember, he squatted 252 and he missed 265. So he's lost 12 kilos there on the squat, but he went three out of three on the bench and he's obviously got a huge bench. So I feel like he would have been a lot more competitive had he got that squat, but you've got to make the lifts. And like I said, in the women's section, making lifts is so freaking critical. All right, bench medals, you can see them here. Chun, Taylor, Kiel taking a bronze from the B group. We're moving on to the deadlifts. We've got Chun opening with 285. And like while Chun had a weaker deadlift, it was still within reason. And you just never know with people's deadlifts. Like some people jump big, jump 20, 25 kilos. So I had no idea what this guy was going to do. I was like, man, this guy could be a dark horse. He could deadlift 310. He does 285, it was pretty good. He takes 300, and this was going to be the big telltale. It wasn't as good as you know, I was hoping, or um, I'm sure he was. But he deadlifts 300, which is a huge deadlift at 74, obviously. And I was at this moment where I realized, okay, he's, he's a bit out of touch. He's not going to be really challenging for the top. He takes 305 on the last lift, and he just fails it. It's too much. Taylor Atwood. This is a tight battle, like I said. Takes 292 and a half on the opener. And remember, he's deadlifted 340.5 about two or three years ago. Obviously, he was in much better health and his training was much better back then. And so this is very reasonable, 292. Takes 310 as a second. And in the meantime, you're going to see uh, these lifts by the other boys are freaking good. They're really putting pressure on him, Tim and Carl. And so while Carl was nominated in third, uh, fourth, Technically to Kiel. Remember, Kiel's total was from an 83. So, yeah, and Kiel's already lifted. So we already know Kiel's total. It's 760. Taylor hits this two, a 310 kilo deadlift beautifully. We're going to skip his third deadlift. We're going to go to Tim. We're going to come back around once we've got a bit more context. Tim takes 297 as an opener. Now, Tim is a monster deadlifter. If you did not know that, it's pretty evident when it's pretty evident when you see this opening deadlift. He then takes 315 kilos. So he's already on 751 as a total. Can't see that there, but he's on 751 at this point. And this is to add 17 kilos to his total. So this is taking to 778.5. Huge total there, a huge deadlift. So he's on 315 on the deadlift. And we're going to skip to Carl Johansson, who opened on 305. And so you can remember, Taylor opened at 292. 
Um, team opens at 297, and Carl opens at 305, which is a daring opener, but he blows it up. And I'm like, oh God, this guy is looking freaking good. He takes his second deadlift at 320 to give him a total of 780. Sorry. And so once the second round of deadlifts are concluded, it is very tight. All the boys have gone, all the top guys have gone two out of two on deadlifts. And it becomes a battle of attempt selection. Who goes first? Taylor goes first. Taylor Ops, he initially had 3-3-1 three, 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 as his initial attempt, but later chose to drop down to 2-3, two, three, two, two, three, which would be the world record deadlift. And remember, his second deadlift was 310, so this is to add 13 kilos to his total. And he's kind of, uh, what am I going to say, is he in the lead? Yeah, I think he was in the lead at this point. And so... Tim is chasing tail on Taylor. Um, and with this lift, Taylor is going to add a very important 13 kilos to his lift. We're going to see what happens. It'll make more sense as I go. Again, I wish I could have a score sheet at each individual point, but I can't do that. Or maybe I could, but it would just be a bit difficult. I don't, wouldn't even know how. And he takes 3 2 3, and it looks like this. He gets to the top. The referees are like, dude, you're not locked out. He goes, all right, I'll lock out a bit more. He finally gets a down call. He's like, what was that? Three red lights. It looks worse than I think it is. And if you watch it again, watch it with me. This is to add 13 kilos to the total. World record deadlift. It's slow, but it doesn't go down. His knees kind of do a little double dip, but the bar doesn't go down. At least I don't think so. He stops there, pulls back further. His grip is rock solid, which I mean, I know you can't get red lighted for bad grip, but it's not like he's losing it. And he gets an own lift. And we're going to take a look at that side view. And this is kind of, again, what I mean about the what I would call inconsistent refereeing, you'll see. This is his finished position. It looks good to me. And because it was three red lights, you can't even contest it. The red lights were two blues, so two resting on the knee legs, one red for not locking out. Again, a little bit unlucky. I mean, he missed that squat, seven and a half on depth, I think. Missed this deadlift, which could have easily gone the other way. Like, I know it was three reds, but it could have easily been three whites. And so because he's missed that, you can see the totals here. Taylor's on 777. Yeah, that's, that's like I said, he was in the lead. Carl on 770, Timothy on 768.5. What this means is that in the second round of deadlifts, Carl Johansson took that 320 deadlift specifically to out total Tim Monaghetti. Very good attempt selection, very good strategy there. Um, let me see here. Um, I've got, I feel like I've got a bit of a lag going on. Okay, we are having a technical issue. I can't pause the recording, and this is already the second time I'm going around doing this, so I'm just going to do this. Uh, screen capture, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna go window capture, or display capture. Let's do this. All right. What does this look like if I do this? Okay, I believe you can see this whole thing now. Yeah. In the title, Tim Monogatti, 324.5. This is the world record deadlift and would move him from bronze to gold. Should he hit it? Obviously, Carl Johansson still to come after him. This isn't ideal. Has an opportunity to reply and go for gold himself. This is a big ask for Tim, but he's going to give it everything. Here he comes, currently in bronze, and that is not threatened. He will so end. Monaghetti comes out here with a 324.5 kilo third attempt deadlift. This is excellent attempt selection. At least I'll walk away with bronze, this is the but he wants rate. the gold. 324.5. He take the lead on. off. But he's going to give it. Taylor Atwood, you'll see here, Tim Monaghetti is on 768.5, nine kilos behind Taylor. And so he takes a nine kilo jump from 315. Everything. Um, if you saw my reel that I posted on Instagram earlier today, doing an Eevee, isn't it? Um, about French team making an error with attempt selection, this is the complete opposite. Perfect attempt selection. Tim Monaghan. It's going. Oh, goes for a world record deadlift. He's that down command. Take first place. I'm going to wait for this. The oh, no. no. 
And he's they there. can protest Ooh, it, and they are. And there goes Rory Lynch at speed. Rory Lynch, Rory Lynch, Rory Lynch, Rory Lynch um, ran with the quick. Go for a. And the jury is over reviewing it. Turn. Overturn? Is it the overall? There, and there it's been a long night, but if my memory votes. serves me correctly, he gets the overturned. This lift gets overturned. And so. Protest it. I'm going to. I mean, take a look at this lift and compare this. Go back and watch. Taylor's. Taylor's going. Better. Oh, that shot is barely locked out. He needs that down command. Taylor's looks better, in my opinion. I'm going to wait for this. The no. Oh, no. Tell, no. The they can he protest it. it and they so if you go back and look at the totals, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. Tim is now on 778.0. No, no, 7.7, 777.5 kilo total to tie Taylor Outwood and be beating him on body weight. Yeah. No, no, I'm a mistake. It's 778. Okay, it is 778. Regardless, he's in the lead above Taylor Atwood. And so the last lifter is Carl Johansson. You can see he's on 77, 770. And so he takes his last deadlift at, if you're doing the maths right, and if I'm doing the maths right, 328 kilos to go to also total 778 oh, kilos. Obviously the world record deadlift attempt. Ah, it's over to goes into the lead. Holy smokes, Tim Taylor Howard has been defeated uh, by Tim yeah, Monogatti. And is Kale Johansson sure going to push Tim him down to I'm going to take that. Cal, uh, jo leader, Cali Johansson, 328 even, trying to pull from bronze. Swap is bronze for a champion. Ryan. But take a look at this. Kali Johansson, the junior. We're still the junior. This is a junior world record. Junior world record total. Junior world record everything. Comes out. 3 out of 3 on Scott 267. 3 out of 3 on Bess at 182. And 3 out of 3 on Bess at 262. Oh! And that one looks certain! That one looks certain! And Kali Johansson has done it in a startling upset in the 74 kilo class! Huge win! And the crowd has spilled onto the field. They think it's all over. The They're absolutely right. They are going nuts! Performance. Congratulations to Carl Johansson. Look at that well, Take a look at this. for the deadlifts. Uh, yeah, so I was right. Tim Monaghetti, 324.5. He gets credited. And if you look at the totals, 778, 778, 77.5 kilos. What a tight battle. I mean, this was the perfect demonstration of how important it is to make lifts. Taylor missed a squat, missed a deadlift, lost by half a kilo to a kid who went nine out of nine had the best minute of his life. I mean, I think it's safe to say that Taylor Atwood is objectively the stronger lifter, but not on this day, or at least not in these conditions. Um, Tim Monaghetti basically had the perfect day as well. He went eight out of eight, skipped a bench. And so Taylor Atwood finishes in bronze. The two kids, I mean, uh, Tim's not, not old himself. I think he's only 26 or 27. Who had basically perfect days against his 7 out of 9. I mean, that's what it takes to take down a legend like Taylor Atwood. Incredible session. We have three lifters within half a kilo. It was an awesome session of lifting. I'm going to jump back in here and round this up because it has been 54 minutes. I'm hoping this all has worked. Thank you for your patience. I hope you've enjoyed this recap. Um, I'm just going to jump in here and just check my notes in case I've missed anything. Uh, yeah, I'm just super impressed with this attempt selection in this men's section. This has been a stark contrast to some of the attempt selection I've seen in previous sessions. I mean, even um, Taylor Atwood's decision to drop down a 3-2-3 for a third attempt deadlift, he couldn't drop any less because um, the Frenchman, uh, Paul Rimbaudville, already took 3-2-2.5. I mean, maybe in hindsight, Taylor Atwood should have dropped even less and maybe dropped down to... 317 and a half before that lift and just added seven and a half kilos because with seven and a half kilos there was no way he was gonna he was gonna lose to Tim Monaghetti and maybe seven and a half kilos was where Carl's limit was hard to say all easy in hindsight but I think that 323 three at the time was the right decision it just didn't work out that way the women's section was freaking crazy we had that incorrect decision to pay the Canadian lifter 190 kilos as a good lift when it was actually 185 we had uh, a Hail Mary pull by Joy Namani to go for bronze with 240.5 kilos that was paid a no lift. We had overturns everywhere. It was an amazing session. So I hope you've enjoyed that recap. If you'd like, go back to the Olympics channel on YouTube and you can watch back all the, all the uh, streams. I know they're long, but you should go back and watch them all. Um, you can check the score sheets. They're all on Goodlift. Just go to goodlift.info. 
all the score sheets are there and you'll be able to see uh, the full score sheets. I appreciate your patience. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go to bed and I will see you all tomorrow. I don't think it's in looping tomorrow, so I'll see you on Thursday for day four of what will be day four of the IPF Classic World Champs. Thank you, everybody.